uh, Jesus referred to himself as the good shepherd. Um, but before we get into this, I want to tell you about the conversation I had at the grocery store with the checkout lady today. Uh, we were in uh, Glenwood today, and after lunch, we went by the grocery store there to get some things, me and Jill. And uh, we were checking out, and so I still had my tie on. I didn't have my coat on, just had my tie on. But, uh, anyway, I was coming through the line, and, and the cashier said, uh, well, he said, how was church today? And I said, well, it was good. It was real good. And she said, well, she said, uh, what was it about? I said, well, uh, it all about Jesus, you know. And she said, well, I figured that. She said, what was the sermon specifically about? I said, well, I said, uh, I think it was how, how to heal a fractured church, you know, one that's divided and, you know, got all these problems in it, you know. I said, there was just, we talked about a solution to, to problems in a church. And she, she said, hmm. She said, well, let me ask you. She said, how do you heal a fractured church? And I said, well, I said, you got to keep Jesus central in everything you do. Keep your eyes on him. And I said, you got to keep unity paramount. I said, it's all about the unity in the church. I said, you do those two things. I said, you'll be steering in the right direction. She said, well, that sounds good. So I got on past her. Then the girl that was uh, you know, bagging our groceries, she said, well, she said, ours. She said, no, in, she said you know, in the book of John, she said, uh, you know, Jesus describes himself in many different ways. And uh, she said, we talked about the bread of life, Jesus being the bread of life. I said, that's wonderful. I said, that's an awesome study. I said, is that John chapter 10? You know, she's like, yeah, you know. She was just telling me what the preacher was saying, you know, and, and all of that. And, and so I, I left there, and I told Jill as we were walking out of the store, I said, you know, how many times do you have conversations like that in the checkout line? And uh, I don't know, y'all, but that just made me feel good. You know what I mean? And uh, I thought, now they obviously didn't sleep through church. They knew exactly what the preacher preached on. And so uh, anyway, <clears throat> we had a good conversation, and I thanked them for, for that. And uh, But you know, it, it it's amazing just in the checkout line to store how you share the Lord, you know. So be looking for those opportunities. Well, we're in John 10 tonight, and, and it just got me thinking this afternoon about this passage. And I, I want to read to you a few verses, and then we're going to kind of jump back in just for a few minutes um, on this. Like I said, we may be in this passage for the next three weeks, just kind of breaking it down. But Jesus begins this chapter by saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he's a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. They shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now that's a beautiful passage of Scripture. Jesus gives a parable. He explains the parable as he does many other times. Uh, throughout the gospel accounts but you know in different settings Jesus gave himself names that that basically 
uh, pointed to special roles that he fulfilled for people, right? Uh, you can just, I mean, there's a bunch of them. That's an excellent study as you go through John's uh, gospel as well. Uh, if you remember in John chapter 6, he refers to himself as the son of man. That is uh, probably one of the more prominent terms you'll hear in the uh, gospel's accounts. Jesus referring to himself as the son of man. That talks about his humanity and it talks about his divinity. He's the son of man. Also in John chapter 6, he refers to himself as the bread of life. Uh, why would he do that? Just like I was talking to the cashier today, uh, Jesus being the bread of life. Well, he, he did that because he is the life-giving role in a person's life. Jesus says, you know, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly, an abundant life, an everlasting life. Eternal life is found only in the Lord Jesus. In John chapter 8, he says, I am the light of the world, meaning that he is the truth and he is clarity, the light. In other words, he, he's the one that, that makes it clear for you in your path. John chapter 10, we just read in verse 9, he says, I am the door, right? He, there's a lot of I am statements in the Bible. He says, I am the door of the sheep. In other words, y'all, he's the only way. He's the only way in to the sheepfold. Uh, in John chapter 11, he's the resurrection and the life. John chapter 14, he's the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter 15, he's the true vine. I mean, it's just chapter after chapter after chapter, G Jesus is dealing with who he is. And then once again here in John chapter 10, he refers to himself as the good shepherd twice. He says, I am the good shepherd. Now, we know in the Bible, there's, there's a, uh, one of the main analogies that we have in the scripture uh, regarding our relationship with the Lord is that of shepherd and sheep. Uh, how many times in the Bible does God refer to his people as sheep? Right? <laughs> a lot. Uh, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, right? And so here Jesus highlights the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. And, and it's a beautiful, beautiful passage. I, I read a story once about two men who were called on in a, in a large classroom setting uh, to recite the 23rd Psalm. And if you know the 23rd Psalm, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And two of these men were called upon to recite that. One of these men was a published orator. I mean, he was a guy that was trained in speech. He was, he was trained in technique. He was trained in drama, okay? And, and so he got up and he quoted uh, the 23rd Psalm, and he repeated this Psalm in a powerful, powerful way. And when he finished... The, the audience just cheered. In fact, they, they asked for an encore, you know, that they might hear uh, his voice again. It was just that good and that pleasing to him. Well, the other man was a much older man, uh, and it was his turn to stand up and, and repeat the 23rd Psalm. And you know, he began, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. But when he finished, uh, there was no sound that came from the large class at all. Nothing. In fact, people sat there in, in a deep mode of devotion and prayer two totally different responses to the same song the first man the orator stood to his feet and he said I have a confession to make he said the difference between what you've just heard from my old friend and what you heard from me is this he said I know the song he said my friend knows the shepherd and folks, I want to tell you something. It makes a big difference who you know. And so Jesus in our text tonight is, is, is using this analogy. One of the many images pointed by John in his gospel is that of Jesus and the good shepherd. And the reason why is because like a good shepherd, Jesus is concerned with the welfare of his sheep. Jesus is concerned with the care of his sheep. And so these verses tonight teach us that Jesus possesses really certain qualities. He really possesses these that qualify him to be called the good shepherd. No one else can be really called the good shepherd other than Jesus. You may ask yourself, why? Well, why does Jesus really deserve to be called the good shepherd and deserve this title? I want to share with you tonight that he possesses the right credentials. And that's what he explains here in the first few verses of John chapter 10. He deserves this title simply because uh, he has the right credentials you say well what do you mean by that well first of all he came properly now let me show you what i mean by that 
Because look what he says in the first three verses. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the porter, that, that's an old English word that just means doorkeeper. To him, the, the, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. He calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. So Jesus came properly. You say, what do you mean by that, Brother Brian? Well, he uses the imagery here of the sheepfold to illustrate his message. And, and, and it's kind of interesting when you study the sheepfold. Uh, you got to understand, uh, in Israel, in and around Israel, and certainly during this particular time, I, I mean, there, there were a lot of shepherds out in the shepherd fields uh, leading their flocks of sheep. And, and so when it would get later on in the evening, early evening, right before dark, uh, I, I guess if some of these shepherds were far away from what's called a sheepfold, uh, they would make kind of a temporary sheepfold in order to put the sheep in and protect the sheep from wild animals and stuff. But if they were close to a, a real sheepfold, uh, they would go and, and the porter would open the door and they would let the sheep, you know. And there may be several shepherds that have their sheep into this one particular fold. And so it was usually, uh, you know, had about 10 foot walls on it and, and, and it just protected the sheep from any wild animals or things uh, of that nature. And so uh, several flocks, like I said, might be placed uh, into that sheep fold at night. And, and literally, the shepherd himself would become the door. Uh, the analogy that I heard from one of the, or talking to one of the shepherds in Israel when I went was the fact that what, you know, they had that staff with them, and they, they always led their, their, their sheep with that long staff, and, and literally they'd put them into a place, and what that man would do, what that shepherd would do, he would just kneel down with his head laying on that staff, and that's, he became the door. That's how he slept. He was right there in the door, meaning that if anything, had, anything wanted to come in and, and, and grab one of the sheep, it had to go through the shepherd in order to get there. Okay? And, and so Jesus is talking about this. Uh, nothing could get into or out of the sheepfold without having to go through the shepherd. Now that's critical. Jesus is telling his audience here that only thieves and robbers seek to enter the sheepfold by any means other than the door. So in other words, they didn't enter properly. If they got in, they didn't come in right the right way. But I want to tell you something, friend. According to the Bible, Jesus deserves the title, the Good Shepherd, because he came the right way. He proves that he's the shepherd of the sheep because he came into the world in the right manner. In other words, he came into this world according to a divine plan. And it was right. It was God's plan. You say, what was that plan? Well, the Bible tells us about it. Uh, he was virgin born. Right? Isaiah seven fourteen tells us that, Behold, a virgin shall bear a son, shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. You see, even it started off through prophecy of, of, about him coming. And then Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. He came the right way. Also, the Bible tells us that he was born in Bethlehem. That's over in the book of Micah. Uh, there in the Old Testament, Micah 5 and verse 2 says that he would be born in Bethlehem. Again, we have the prophecy of the Messiah, and then we have Jesus fulfilling that prophecy. He came the right way. Uh, and, and according to Galatians 4.4, 4, he came in the fullness of time. I love that verse of Scripture because the Bible says in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, right? And, and, and he came, and, and when you put all this together, Jesus was the right per person born in the right place, arriving at the right time. In other words, he possessed all the credentials necessary to prove that he is the good shepherd. He came the right way. He didn't cheat his way in. He didn't try to come through a back door or make a back door or divert God's plan or anything else. No, he came the right way, okay? So he came properly. He deserves that title because he came properly, but also he calls properly. Notice he says here in John chapter 10, he says, uh, he says, verse 4, when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, it says, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Okay? Now that's important. 
and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers, but they know the voice of the shepherd. Now there may be several flocks sharing the same sheepfold. What would be interesting is that when it got daylight, or right before daylight, the shepherds would come up to the door, and you may have 200 sheep in this sheepfold. You may have three or four shepherds waiting to get their sheep out of the sheepfold. And that shepherd would come up to the door and he began calling his sheep by name. And what would those sheep do? They'd come out one by one. They followed his voice. And as he called them, he backed up. He had to. He had a pretty good sized flock. He just had to keep backing up and calling them from a distance. And then when he called their name, they recognized the voice and they came unto them. They instantly recognized his voice and they responded. They, they know his call. I heard a story about a man in Australia one time that was arrested. He was charged with stealing a sheep. Uh, but, but he claimed emphatically that, that it was one of his own sheep that had been missing for many days and he found it. And, and so he was bringing it home. And so this thing even went to court, you know. Uh, and, and so when, you know, when the case came to the court, the judge was kind of puzzled. He, he really didn't know how to decide whether or not this guy actually stole the sheep or was he telling the truth or what. But, but at last, he, he asked the sheep to be brought into the courtroom. He says, I want the sheep to be brought in the courtroom. He said, the only way we're going to settle this is bring the sheep. So they brought the sheep into the courtroom. And then he ordered the plaintiff to step outside the courtroom there and to call the animal. Well, the sheep made no response except to raise its head and look frightened. <laughs> you know, when, when the plaintiff was calling the sheep. And then the judge instructed this defendant to go into the courtyard and call the sheep. And he went out in the courtyard and called the sheep. And when the accused man began to make his distinctive call, that sheep bounded toward the door. Why? Because he knew the voice. He, he recognized the voice. And the judge just said, case dismissed. <laughs> he knows his voice. You know, he's, he's telling the truth. Y'all, I want to tell you something. In our world today, there's a lot of voices. There are many voices that are competing for our attention. Every day of our life, uh, there's all kinds of, we hear all kinds of voices, and they're all competing for you and your time and your attention and, and all of that. But listen, there's a special note to the voice of the Lord. There's a very distinctive call from the voice of the Lord, that still, small voice that we hear. His voice sounds right. <laughs> to a desperate call it really does we we know it we we, we know when it's him that is that, that that is trying to get our attention and calling us to do what we need to do so when we look at jesus here the reason why he deserves this title he, is that he came properly he calls properly but he also commands properly look at verse four and five when he put it forth his own sheep in other words when he gets them out of the fold watch this he goeth before them and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will they not follow, they'll flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. In other words, when the shepherd calls forth his sheep, notice it says he goes before them. That's interesting. He goes before them. He leads the way. The shepherd is always leading the way. And you know what? They instinctively follow. That's interesting. By the way, a shepherd doesn't have to drive the sheep. Folks, can I just tell you, you don't drive sheep. Okay? You lead sheep. Okay? Uh, we're not talking about cattle. Now, you can drive cattle. You can push them all over wherever. You know what I mean? You've got enough dogs and horses there. You can get, you know what I mean? You can drive cattle. But you don't drive sheep. You lead sheep. And they follow him. You want to know why they follow him? Because they trust him. They trust him. Let me ask you a question. Why do you follow the Lord? Why do we sing the song, follow, follow? You know what I mean? What, what, what's the big deal about following Jesus? I'll tell you why. He's a good shepherd. He cares about your soul. He cares about his sheep. And, and one thing you'll have to say about the Lord, you can trust the Lord, right? You, you can just trust the Lord. And boy, what a great truth this is. You know, when a person is saved by the grace of God, I, I believe that when a person is truly saved, um, they will have a desire to follow the good shepherd. When, when the Lord saves your soul from hell, 
and changes your destination to eternity in heaven with him, y'all, there's something loving about that. That, that. That's something I couldn't do. When a person is saved and their heart is right with God, you know, that person doesn't have to be begged to come to church. They come because they love it. They trust it. They, they don't have to be begged to tithe or to share their faith or, or whatever. You see, they've been called out by the shepherd and they have a burden to worship the shepherd. The, their heart's desire is to glorify God when they're truly saved. Isn't that true? Um... It, it just is. So Jesus is the good shepherd. And because of this, now listen, he knows his sheep. <laughs> he knows you. He knows you better than you know you. Right? He, he made you. So he knows his sheep, but get this. He loves his sheep. Now I want you to think about this tomorrow. I want you to, I want you to just think about this thought all day tomorrow. He knows me in and out and he still loves me he knows me and y'all I'm going to tell you there, there's a lot of, <laughs> there may be some things about me that aren't, aren't lovable you know what I mean but he loves me anyway. he knows me but yet he loves me he leads me he guides me he protects me that's what a good shepherd does that, and when you read the 23rd psalm it just lays it all out Right, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Do you know that, that a sheep will not drink water from a rushing river or a rushing lake or a rushing stream? By, that usually when, they come, when that shepherd would come up to a stream and that water was moving quickly, he'd put rocks in there and just kind of dam it up a little bit to slow that stream down a little bit because it says he leads me beside still water. That, they'll drink out of still waters. But they won't, that shepherd knows every little detail about that sheep. And he risks his life, gives his life for those sheep. And that's, what, that's the analogy that Jesus is giving for us. And when you understand something about a shepherd and a sheep, oh my goodness, y'all, I don't know if we want to be called anything else. I don't know anything better than that. You say, well, no, that's not bragging. You know, sheep are pretty dumb. I get it, y'all, we're dumb. Let's just be honest. Uh, how many of you done a dumb thing this last week? Thought a dumb thing? Yeah, we're... We, we, we have no clue. Here's the deal. Sheep have to have a shepherd. They, because if they're left to themselves, guess what? They, they don't have defense mechanisms like other animals. You know, bears have the mighty jaws and the claws and, and all that, and they, and they, they can fight in a, you know, their attacker or whatever. And uh, I mean, even an eagle's got the big talons and, and all. What does a sheep got? <laughs> Boy, that's scary, isn't it? You see what I mean? That's all he's got. And there ain't much of that. You know? He has no defense mechanism on him at all. He is in dangerous ground in this world by the many predators that are after him. So he has to have a shepherd. God's people are the same way. You know, we think we're pretty smart. I can do it myself. I'll have my own way. I can handle it. Yeah, go ahead, big boy. You see what I mean? How's that working? We've got to have a shepherd to lead us. And I'm thankful he leads us because here's the deal. He knows all about tomorrow. I don't. Matter of fact, he's already in tomorrow. You see, he's already in next week, next month, next year. He's already in eternity. That's where he's at. That's the person I want leading me. The one who already knows my path. Right? Y'all, I'm telling you, he's a good shepherd. God is a good God. David said, the Lord my shepherd. Boy, he put emphasis on that. He, he's not just a shepherd. He's my shepherd. That's what I'm going to ask you tonight. Is he your shepherd? You say, well, I, I, you know, I, I, I've heard some really good things about uh, That's good, but he, let me ask you again, is he yours? The only way he's your shepherd personally is if you've accepted him as Lord and Savior. And so David said he's my shepherd. And listen to this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Y'all, that's us every day. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. Do you realize how close to death you are every day? When you get out on that highway and you're in this lane and this car is coming, and do you realize, do you, do you really understand just how close you are to eternity? 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, guess what? I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. It's not that he just cares about me. He's with me. That's the good shepherd. That's the one I want lead me in my life. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to take this passage even further with the verses we've read. But y'all, that's enough to chew on right there for the rest of the week. He knows me, and he loves me anyway. You know what I mean? I, I don't have the words or the answer to that, but all I can tell you is I praise the Lord for it. I, I really do. I'm going to ask you to stay in tonight as we have a, a word of prayer and our invitation. Father in heaven, we are thankful today that your son Jesus is our great shepherd. And Father, I know he's seated at the right hand of you, and he's making intercession for us even right now. And Lord, we thank you for his goodness, for his grace and his mercy in our life even when we fail Him, and Lord miserably fail Him, He still loves and guides and protects and blesses. And Lord, I, I pray tonight that we'll take this week and we'll just understand a little more about the shepherd and his sheep. Thank you for being our shepherd. And Lord, we just ask you to help us in our daily life to be what you want us to be. Help us follow you. Help us trust you more. Help us to love you more in everything that we do. And we'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together tonight.